Welcome into the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Mutuals and Simulcasting. We're taking a look at some of the great racing on Friday, day after Thanksgiving for the podcast this week. And we'll start at Churchill Downs. Uh, their 10th race is the Grade 3 Commonwealth Turf for three-year-olds on the turf going a mile and a 16th. And uh, it's a big field here, pretty well-matched group. I didn't see a real standout. How do, who did you land on? No, I didn't either. I had 13 horses, and I, I I could get on a couple of horses that are probably going to be, I think the favorite in here might be 9-2 to two or 5-1. to one. I, I don't see any stands out, stand out at all. Settled on uh, Mr. Ramsey's horse, Wayward Kit, the five horse for Wesley Ward. Um, the horse almost won the Bryan Station at Keeneland. Uh, on a yielding turf course, and he's not going to get that on Friday. It looks like we're not going to get rain. Well, possibly on Friday afternoon, it could it could rain. So I, that that could be even a more of a plus. Uh, they are saying it's going to be late Friday, I think now. But uh, um, the yielding turf course, he got beat by three quarters of a length to uh, uh, at, in the Bryan Station on uh, Breeders Cup Friday. So that set him up perfectly for this. He's got he went ran the Jefferson Cup at Churchill and ran well. Got beat by a couple couple of these in here, but I think uh, Wayward Kitten takes a step forward. I also like, uh, I would key him on top, one go, all go, the eight horse for um, uh, uh, Le Peru, and um, I, I came out of the same race and, and had the lead to the top of the stretch and just gave it up, again, the yielding turf course. It might be, he might be better on firm, tor- firm turf. He had better buyers in the last couple of races. So one go, all go is the other horse that I like in the same race. And then the three horse, All Masty, for Brad Cox, who's been very hot. Uh, John Court rides here, stretching out from seven furlongs at Belmont and coming to Churchill, where he's not, not one, but Greg Cox is always tough here. And then the other horse that I like uh, for price, a little bit of price, is Nusa Farah, uh, for John Velasquez, a one horse for Graham Motion. Pulled up in the Hawthorne Derby, but uh, walked off and probably is okay, or Graham wouldn't be bringing him back. So that's my four top choices with the uh, five wayward kitten key on top. I'm going to take uh, a little bit of a price play here in Quality Bird. I like horses that uh, improve late in the year like this. And uh, the last two races since uh, this one was put on the turf, buyer figs have jumped up, and the uh, Ian Wilkes has been able to put several good works into this horse since that win at Keeneland on opening during opening week. So I think quality birds improving coming out of a non-winners of two other than so it's a it's a step up. But I think an improving horse could make that kind of a move into a Grade Three. It's not a huge jump. So I'm going to try Quality Bird. Um, some of the ones you mentioned I would use in an exacta box. I don't think I'd necessarily key on Quality Bird. I'd just put him in, in a box with Wayward Kitten, the five, Almasty, the three, Nusifera, the one, Granny's Kitten, the 11. So maybe those those five in a uh, $2 exacta box or a, a $1 box. Uh, for a little bit of a price, Subsidian Splendor intrigued me a little bit if you want to go even a little deeper in a horizontal wager, but... I'm going to key around uh, or make the wind bet on Quality Bird in the Commonwealth Turf. 11th race is the Grade 1 Clark Handicap. It's a mile and an eighth for three-year-olds and up. I went for race day in there, won the Fayette at Keeneland with a 105 buyer. That was off a, a layoff, and now second off the layoff could get could be even better and beat Hopportunity that day. He's going to have to do it again, but I think this horse is maybe back to the form that he was back in the spring when he really looked good. One for one at Churchill, two for two at a mile and an eighth, and uh, well drawn, I think, uh, in that nine hole to just kind of track the speed and take over, turn in for home, and and hold off opportunity and keen ice, a couple of late runners. Protonico I might uh, toss in there as well, but race day is going to be the key for me uh, out of the Pletcher stable. How about you? I'm right with you on race day. Um, he ran great in the grade two Fayette, and the key thing to me is, if you go back to his spring form at Oakland, he ran a 105 buyer in the Razorback and came back uh, a month later, four weeks later, and ran a 109 and won the Oakland Handicap just in a walk, one by three and a half. Beat some nice horses there, and it looks like the same pattern. Uh, Pletcher's got him. He, he took a little time off after Saratoga. He didn't run very well up there to forego at all. And then he came came back off a layoff. And looked good in the head. I think it sets him up perfectly for this race. And I also like four-year-olds over three-year-olds. I'm going to take FNX second. I thought FNX ran a great race in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, he, he was never going to beat American Pharaoh, but he beat everybody else. Um, and, you know, got a 110 buyer and got beat by six links. Um, so 110 normally can, can win the Breeders' Cup Classic. You just caught a 
caught a free course that day, and uh, FNX, I think, comes into this race going the right way and, and has a real shot. Keen Ice is the late closer that I think will get up for peace but probably can't win. And Opportunity is right with race day, so you got to play him as you play race day. But I would key race day on, on top. I would use FNX, though, because I think FNX is really good right now, and that Breeders' Cup Classic is deceptive. Getting beat by six links to American Pharaoh is no disgrace. Aqueduct's eighth race on Friday is the grade three go for one for Phillies and Mayors three and up. Go on a flat mile, and um, I didn't see anybody that really jumped off the page at me in here. Who did you land on? Well, I'm going to take a horse that, that I think we both played um, uh, played spelling again at Churchill last time out, and uh, I think we keyed that horse in the pick four, and she won really easily. And, and you look at the buyers, and maybe they don't match up here as well as, as you might want to see, but she could have run a lot quicker than in the Chaluki. Uh, ran a mile. It uh, seems to be her best distance. She's two for three. Uh, she won that so easily, and uh, she gets Louis Saez now, and, and uh, Louis uh, is a good jock at, at Aqueduct, and Brad Cox ships in from Churchill. I think she's got a real shot to win this race, and uh, she may, you may get a little priced on it. I don't think she's going to be a huge favorite. Taurus would be the uh, the second choice here, and I think um, he ran great in the Breeders' uh, in the, or she ran great in the Breeders' Cup. Philly and Mare sprint and only got beat by a length to Wavell Avenue. And Wavell Avenue ran great that day. So Taurus has got a real shot and probably will be the favorite. In America, the three horse, um, um, the two horse rather, I think spelling again is the three, uh, she comes out of uh, the turn back alarm at, at Belmont and won that race with a 93 buyer and tossed the flower bow and she's been very consistent. Uh, I don't know why they put her on the turf. She looks like a much better horse on the dirt and I think she's got a shot. But I would key. Uh, spelling again, the Churchill Shipper in the Aqueduct for in the um, Go For One handicap. That is the first instinct I had was to go spelling again. I ended up switching to Kiss to Remember. Uh, Marty Wilson doesn't ship a lot out of South Florida, and he shipped this horse up to run in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint, and she had the 12-hole and didn't, didn't run uh, great. And rather than just take her back home and, and regroup, he sends her – to New York for this race. She's two for three at a mile, which I like. She just missed by a length in the grade one ballerina. And I read Ortiz signs on to ride. So just some intriguing things there on the six kiss to remember for me. Definitely use uh, spelling again with her. The one will it, uh, the seven may my Ling for Pletcher. But uh, I'm going to try to key on kiss to remember at what hopefully will be a little bit of a price. Delmar's eighth race on Friday's the Seabiscuit Handicap on the turf at a mile and a 16th for three-year-olds and up. I took Bal Abali, uh, the Mandela horse that uh, looks so good uh, first time out in this country and then regressed off that couple of subsequent starts. But that last effort at Delmar, strong off the layoff, looks like he's back in top form. Mandela's 23% second off this kind of layoff. And uh, I like Bal Abali a lot there. I'll use him with Seek again, the four, the five. Avanzari and the one uh, macro access, but uh, I like three Bali Bali a lot in there. How about you? I'm right with you. I think um, uh, after shipping up from Brazil, I mean, the horse is almost undefeated, 13 for 16. And he's run well every time. He, he fires every time out. And um, I think he's a, Bayerano is a good fit for him. Um, I think I think Bali Bali, you know, the prep race on October 30th with an easy win, an optional claimer, could be sitting on a really big Really big race. And uh, Seek Again is a logical favorite off the back class. Really good efforts in the four-star day, even the Shedwell Turf Mile. But I think Bala Bali has a um, home court advantage out here because uh, has really run well at Del Mar the first two times out. Um, the price horse here may be um, Alert Bay, the 8, uh, 11 for 20 lifetime. Got really good this fall. And I think got a shot in to uh, get into the trifecta. But Bala Bali is my choice as well. I would single him in a pick four. Best of luck in your wagers this weekend. Some great racing on uh, on Saturday as well. So as Churchill meet finishes up and they have a big weekend at Aqueduct. So a lot of great racing around the country for the holiday weekend. For Jim Goodman, I'm Tom Leach, and that's the In the Money Podcast. This is KeenelandSelect.com.